Hello and welcome to another Revit tutorial. In this tutorial, I'll be showing you how to detail a end plate connection for your column. So let's get started. So let's zoom in at one and left click on this end plate over here and click on edit type. And to the right of modify parameters over here, you can find an edit button. Left click on it. So for this video, I'll be just going through the base plate drop down window over here. And let's start with this first tab over here, base plate layout. So right now, if we go to a side view, you can see that the plate thickness is set to three centimeters over here. And for this case, I'll just keep it at two centimeters because three is a bit much. And we need to go and bring this column downwards because once we've already altered the thickness, there's a gap over here. So for column shortening, we can choose none which means that the gap will be bigger. Plate thickness, it still hasn't closed the gap. Or value, it means that you can key in any value that you want so that the column will be touching the end plate. So in this case, I'll key in 0 0.03 because that seems to be the value that works for this case. And one thing I forgot to mention is the layout over here. So I'll just go to a plan view. And currently we are set at projections over here, which means that the rotation is locked. If you, choo if you choose total over here, you can play around with the rotation. For example, I can key in 45 degrees and the end plate and the bolts will be rotated by 45 degrees. If you choose from center, the rotation is also unlocked. But then you can see that the end plate is too small for our use case over here. So it's not very useful. And by anchors also has the rotation unlock, which is also the same for from center and total over here. But in this case, I don't need any rotation, so I'll just keep it at zero and projections will just do fine for me. And now moving on to the base plate dimensions over here, you can see there are quite a lot of options, but they are all mostly grayed out except for projection one. This is because of the fact that we've checked the all projections equal box over here. So this means that dimension 1, 2, 3, and 4 will be the same. So if I change it to say 0 0.1 meter over here, everywhere else will be increased to 0 0.1 meter. So I do not need to key in manually anymore. And for this video, I'll be keeping the projection 1 as 10 centimeters or 0 0.1 meters over here. And for plate corners, there are quite a lot of options over here. So I'll go through each one. There are up to four different options over here. You have none, which means that you don't have any cut on any of the corners here. If you choose fillet, you'll cut the corner off in a diagonal manner over here. And if you choose cut, it means that you have a square cutout over here for the corner. And for the convex option, you'll, basic, you'll basically have a rounded and smoothed out corner over here. So for this video, I will not have any corner cuts over here. So I'll just keep all at none. But one, one thing to do note is that if you were to choose a corner shape over here, you can easily change the length by just playing around with the values here, you can make it to say 0 0.01 or 0 or 0 0.05. It's all up to you. But in this case, like I said, I won't be using any, so I'll just keep it at zero and keep this at none. And moving on to anchor and holes over here, we can see that the anchor type has a lot of options here. So for this video, I'll be using a Fisher FBN over here. And one one thing to note is that the anchor grade will cause the maximum size to be different. So if you choose A4, the largest size would be 16 millimeters here. If you choose galvanized steel, you'll have 20 millimeters. So for this case, I'll be using a 20 millimeter anchor. So I'll just keep it at 20 here and set the an anchor grade to steel galvanize and anchor assembly to set. And for anchor length, there are many different options here. So for this case, I'll just keep it at 18 centimeters here. So the invert anchor option here will, as the name suggests, invert where the 
tightening nut will be. So if I check on the invert box, the tightening nut will be down here and the long part of the anchor will be up here. So this is not correct, so I'll just leave this as unchecked. And for hole tolerance definition, you can either choose automatic or variable. So it's up to you. If you choose variable, you can change the value here. And if you check this create only hole option, it means that you won't have any anchors here at all, as you can see, and everything here is grayed out. So this is not what I want over here. So I'll leave this as unchecked. And slotted holes over here, if you checked it, you'll see that the end plate will have a huge cut over here. And this is not the correct design for an end plate for my case here, so I'll just keep this as unchecked. And I can't exactly imagine anyone using slotted holes like this. So I'll just leave this as unchecked over here. And moving on to washer plate, you can create a washer plate by taking this box and you can adjust the thickness of the washer plate over here and you can adjust the dimensions in terms of length and width for your washer plate as you can see in this diagram here number two represents the length and the width and right now it's set to six centimeters here and if I want to play around with it say make it 0.05 you make it smaller and for hole tolerance, you can set it as variable or same as base plate. For this case, I'll just keep it as same as base plate over here. And create underneath means that the washer plate will be down here instead of up here. So for this case, I'll just keep it as unchecked. So looking at the size of the washer plate, it's best to make it slightly smaller because it is... Uh, touching the column flange here, so I'll just leave it to about 4 centimeters here. So it's just enough. And moving on to anchor parallel web, you can see that there's a number option over here. So this number option will adjust the number of anchors that you'll have parallel to the web. So if I key in free, As you can see, that there are three sets of anchor bolts that are parallel to the web over here. So you have one, two, and three. If you put four, then you'll have four, and etc. So for this case, I'll just keep it at two. And you can change the distance between one anchor to another by changing the intermediate distance from, say, 25 centimeters to, let's say, 30 centimeters here. So they are more spaced out. And you can set offsets from the center, so you can key in a positive value if you want to move the anchors downward over here, or you could key in a negative value if you want to move the anchors up over here. So for this case, I'll keep it at zero. So if you were to tick on remove center bolts by accident, in this case it doesn't do anything, so I'll just leave it as unchecked over here. So if you want a second group of anchors, you can add more if you want to any side. For example, you can add to the left side here, and I can key in one. So as you can see, there are more anchors on the left side. Or you could add more to the right, or you could add on both sides over here. So I do not need any additional anchors, so I'll just keep it at none. So just like the anchors parallel web, you can play around with the number over here for anchors parallel flange so if i key in four it means that i will have four groups of anchors that are parallel to the flange of this column so in this case i only need two and for intermediate distance i'll keep it at 0 0.3 meters here sorry uh, 0 0.3 and offset from center will adjust whether or not you want to place it uh, this way or this way so if I key in 0 0.3, it will go down over here. If I key in minus 0 0.3, it will move up. So in this case, I do not need any uh, offset from the center, so I'll just keep it at 0. And for group 2, you can either choose top and say add 1 over here. So you'll have some 
additional anchors over here. If you choose bottom, it will be here instead. And if you choose both sides, it will be on both sides of the column flange over here. So in this case, I will have none. So I'll just keep it at none. So moving on to welds over here, I would like to have welds at all of these three points. So I'll just click on all around over here. And I will put the thickness of the web as 0 0.01 meters here. And the weld type will be a fillet weld. So if you'd like to keep the weld thickness and weld type the same for all three points over here, then you can just keep this as checked. If you don't, you can uncheck it and you can play around with the thickness. For example, you can key in two centimeters here for number two and two centimeters for number three. And perhaps you might want a back weld for both. You can do that. But in this case, I'll just keep it the same all around. So I'll just keep this box as checked. So I've already gone through from base plate layout all the way to welds over here. So now it's time to just click on OK. And I'll click on Apply and OK. And there we go. We've just finished detailing our column and plate over here. And that's it for this video today, folks. I hope that you liked this video and found this video on detailing column and plates useful. Do consider subscribing if you want to watch more video tutorials on Revit or other civil engineering softwares. And as always, I hope that you are safe in these unprecedented times. And keep learning and goodbye.